Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Sauce. Continuing on with college football week seven. College football's been rough for me, man. Hopefully this turns around this week, uh, but we got a big one here. Actually, this whole weekend is loaded with college football games, um, but this might be the biggest of them all. Ohio State is on the road in Eugene to play the Ducks. Let's go. Welcome to The Sauce. The Sauce. Sauce. Hey, get the sauce. All right, like I said, Buckeyes are on the road here, and the Ducks are catching three and a half points at home. It was a two and a half before last weekend. Reopened at three, now three and a half. So Ohio State, pretty significant road favorites in this one. Total sitting at 52 and a half or 53, depending on your sports book. So let's go ahead and get into this matchup. And Andy insisted that we start um, by looking at their common opponent. Both these teams have played Michigan State. Actually, both these teams have played Michigan State in the last two weeks. Um, I'd say Ohio State, probably the more impressive performance. They went on the road into East Lansing, put up 38 points. I mean, both these teams beat the shit out of Michigan State, but Ohio State did it on the road and did it slightly more impressively, I'd say. Uh, if you look at the passing numbers, I mean, they're pretty close, pretty comparable. I don't think there's much to take away from this. Uh, but anyway, let's get into the matchup. We'll start with Ohio State's offense. Um, obviously, one of the best in the country. That's We're going to be saying that a lot with these two units. One of the best in the country. Uh, they're second in OFEI. I mean, they're fourth in the country in yards per play, fifth in success rate, third in PPA. The criticism for Ohio State's offense is pretty much the same criticism you could say for the defense, for Oregon's offense, and Oregon's defense. Who have they played? I mean, who have they proven it against? And the answer for both teams is really nobody. Will Howard has some great looking numbers on the year, over 1,200 yards passing, 9.6 yards per attempt is excellent. Uh, 12 touchdowns, three interceptions, big time throw rate down at C minus, which is indicative of exactly what I said. Hasn't really been put in a situation where he needs to make big throws. I mean, they've been heavy favorites, winning comfortably this whole year. One criticism you can throw at Will Howard's numbers, he did a lot of his damage in the Marshall and Western uh, Michigan games, 350 yards a game in those two. 11 1.75 yards per attempt, almost a 60% success rate per drop back. If you look at his numbers in the other three games, not as impressive, but I mean, still good. Just down at 7.8 yards per attempt, 50.6% success rate per drop back, still excellent. Uh, but most of his yards and, and the big plays, the 11.7 yards per attempt or whatever, that happened in the Marshall and Western Michigan games. Uh, obviously, this Oregon defense is in another class. They did just play Iowa, so let's give them some credit, but Iowa has no offense at all. Um, the Oregon defense looks great. 13th in yards per play, 13th in success rate, um, elite numbers against the pass, maybe a little bit shaky against the run. 44th in yards per carry, 39th in success rate. They're still sitting at 25th in effective rush, 12th in DFEI as a unit. This Oregon pass defense looked absolutely elite across the board in weeks one through five, allowing just five yards per pass attempt, 29.3% success rate per dropback, 154.8 passing yards per game allowed. Then we saw Aiden Childs make some plays. Keep in mind, Aiden Childs fumbled on the one yard line going in. In that one, that game could have looked a little differently. I mean, it was an ass beating, but Michigan State did continue continue to shoot themselves in the foot, uh, which made it look a lot worse than it was. Aiden Childs was making some plays. They had 191 yards passing in the game, 8.7 yards per attempt. So Childs was making some plays when he dropped back. It wasn't an absolute domination. It was more Michigan State just kept shooting themselves in the foot, which has been the story of their season uh, so far this year. Now you might be thinking, well, Kyle, that was Aiden Childs, a freshman folding under the Oregon pressure. Will Howard's not going to do that. Well, hold on. If you look at Will Howard's splits when given a clean pocket and when pressured, it's a little bit concerning here. A huge drop off in production. He has not done a good job handling the pressure so far this year. Now, the good news for Will Howard is he hasn't he hasn't really been pressured much on the season. They haven't really played anybody up into the Iowa game. And the Ohio State offensive line has been elite in terms of pass protection. I mean, 19th in sack rate allowed, second in pressure rate, second in hurry rate. So Will Howard has struggled when he's been pressured. He just hasn't been pressured much. It might be coming here. And you might be thinking, well, Kyle, they just played Iowa. Iowa's an elite run defense. They're an elite defense across the board. They don't have the edge rushers. They don't have the talent at edge rusher like Oregon has. Uh, this is one of the best pass rushers in the country. They're second in pressure rate, first in pass rush win rate. So even though I like Iowa's front seven in terms of defending the run better than Oregon's, 
In terms of pressuring the passer, give me Oregon's edge rushers. As a whole, I don't like this matchup for Will Howard in the Ohio State pass game. I think Oregon is able to generate pressure on him, and I think we could see some mistakes. But what about the run defense? I know some people are concerned with the Oregon run defense based on the Boise State game. Genty had the 70-yard run, and, and they broke some big plays there. Uh, 6.7 yards per carry allowed in that one, 221 rushing yards per game. Just 37%, 37.5% success rate, though, meaning they weren't consistently getting their four- and five-yard runs. They just broke a couple big plays, which aren't insignificant, but usually what you like to see is teams consistently getting five yards a carry. That's how you can determine if you can trust a run defense. That's not really how it went down. And then in their other four games, Oregon was elite against the run. Just 2.7 yards per carry allowed, 71 and a half rushing yards per game allowed. So I don't know if I'm willing to say that I don't trust this Oregon run defense because Genty broke a 70 yarder. You know what I mean? I feel like that's not a responsible way to look at it. That being said, Ohio State has Judkins and Trevion Henderson. So this is a dynamic rushing attack. I do think Ohio State should be able to run the ball a bit on Oregon. But as far as the passing attack, like I said, I think Oregon's able to give Will Howard problems. But what about on the other side of the ball? Let's talk about the Oregon offense. I mean, one of the best in the country, just like Ohio State is. Ohio State sitting at second in OFEI. Oregon's third. Elite numbers rushing, elite numbers passing. They're 15th in the country in yards per play. Dylan Gabriel has excellent numbers this year, over 1,400 yards passing, 8.6 yards per attempt, 11 touchdowns, three interceptions. Big time throw rate down at a C, just like Will Howard. Hasn't been put in situations where he really needed to make big throws to come back from behind or, or to get down the field and win a game. I know they played a couple close ones, but as a whole, I mean, Oregon hasn't really been tested yet. I will say I'm a little concerned that the passing production took a dip in their last two games. Um, in the Boise State and Oregon State game, 11.45 yards per attempt, 54.7% success rate per drop back. In their last two games, 7.2 yards per attempt, 47%. I mean, not that this is bad, but definitely a drop off. Uh, you expect Oregon to have better passing numbers than this against the likes of UCLA and Michigan State. Although, as I'm saying that, UCLA and Michigan State both have surprisingly decent defenses. Uh, but still, definitely a dip in production the last two games. Now they play Ohio State, and obviously we know elite numbers across the board. They're actually first in the country in yards per play allowed, seventh in DFEI. Questionable competition, and just like the Oregon defense, this is crazy, it's, it's so similar. Just like the Oregon defense, the only team that was able to throw the ball a bit on Ohio State Aiden Childs, eight yards per attempt allowed in that one, 199 yards passing, over 40% success rate per drop back too. This kid Childs is making plays on some elite defenses. Their pass defense numbers in their other four games, just 4.75 yards per attempt, 112 and a half passing yards allowed per game. And these are games where they're up big on the scoreboard. So these teams are dropping back the pass on Ohio State and are just unable to do it. And just like Oregon, Ohio State has an elite pass rush. They're actually first in sack rate, 19th in pressure rate. Oregon's offensive line has done a fine job in pass protection, but kind of saying the same thing here that I said on the other side of the ball, Ohio State's pass rush is definitely going to be their toughest test. And I expect the Buckeyes to win some of these battles and put pressure on Dylan Gabriel. But unlike Will Howard, Dylan Gabriel's actually handled pressure really well, and one of the best in college football so far this year. A plus QB rating when pressured. Turnover worthy play rate, B plus. A plus yards per attempt. Dylan Gabriel has been excellent when pressured so far this year. I really like that. You got two teams playing defenses that are gonna be their biggest test. I know Ohio State just played Iowa, but in terms of a pass rush, Oregon is definitely their biggest test. There's gonna be pressure on these quarterbacks. Quarterbacks that haven't necessarily seen a ton of pressure so far this year. I like the fact that Dylan Gabriel's done a lot better job than Will Howard handling the pressure so far this year. Now, I know everyone's down on Oregon's rushing attack. I mean, the first two games of the year, they were really struggling to run the ball, just three yards per carry, 108 and a half rushing yards per game. They were struggling to run the ball on Idaho, was definitely a little bit concerning. But look at the three games since, 5.77 yards per carry, 208 rushing yards per game, over 51% success rate. And if you've watched Oregon games the last few weeks, Jordan James is a problem. That's one of the best backs uh, in college football. So I'm not reading too much into the first two games. Oregon definitely has a dangerous rushing attack. Jordan James, I mean, really impressive. Looking like an NFL kid for sure. Um, as far as Ohio State's run defense, it's elite. I know Iowa did average 4.3 yards per carry, but 23% success rate, meaning they broke a couple long ones to make the yards per carry uh, look better. They weren't consistently running the ball in Ohio State like that. And in their other four games, they were elite, just 1.84 yards per carry allowed. In the other four games, 61.8 rushing yards allowed per game. So uh, Ohio State's run defense is official. So where does that leave me in terms of placing a bet? 
Um, well, okay. So if you're using just what we've seen this season as a body of work, right, as a resume, then no question I would agree with you if you say Ohio State looks like the stronger team. I, I don't think there's any arguing that. But this is college football, and these are two elite teams facing their first huge test of the year. And these college football coaches, they do all kinds of tricks, man. They hold back sections of their playbook for this game. There's all kinds of, I mean, sometimes you can't judge how an elite team looks against a bad team because it's not at all a reflection of what that team is or what that team's capable of. So personally, I agree that Ohio State has looked like the stronger team so far. But in my opinion, this is going to be the test. This is where we're going to find out where these teams are at. And I don't think Oregon should be catching more than a field goal at home in Eugene. I think that's way too much based on a sample size that isn't necessarily an accurate reflection of what these two teams are. I mean, look at the college football playoff last year. Look at the teams that made it. Look at their body of work. You can find games early in the year where they didn't look great. That's not what they are. We find out what these teams are as the season progresses in games like this. If Oregon wins this game, beats Ohio State by a touchdown, no one's even going to care about Idaho. They won the game. No one's even going to talk about it. That's kind of how college football works, man. This is the first true test. Oregon shouldn't be catching three and a half. I think they could win. So give me the Ducks plus three and a half. Put a big disclaimer on the screen, Andy, when you're editing this. I have been getting crushed in college football. Don't use crush. Say, I have been losing my college football bets. So please, if you're going to tail, tail responsibly. But I like Oregon here. Uh, I think they can win. So give me Oregon taking the Ducks plus three and a half. If you'd like to see all the bets I have open, head over to kylecrums.com and click on open bets. You'll see all mine as well as everyone on the staff here. Also, if you signed up to Sauce Network Plus, it comes with access to the Discord and you can participate in the weekly betting league. $150 cash and one of these trophies go to the winner every single week. So if you're interested, head over to the website and sign up. Live show Saturday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern time to kick off. We'll go through every single game on the board or as many as we can. If you're able to make it, we'd love to see in the comments. Let's have ourselves a good college football week seven. I could use it, man. College football has been beating the hell out of me this year. Hopefully that turns around. Please bet responsibly. Talk to you in the Discord.